everyone. Um, Lord has a sense of humor, and then we get in the way. <laughs> I'm in a dilemma. So my dilemma is, is that I was walking my dog the other day, and I was thinking about like the coronavirus, I was thinking about the economy, the unemployment, the upcoming elections, um, all these things and the effects and what's possible, what's going to happen, how's it going to affect 10 millions and millions of people, including myself, will the world change, are we going to have to take vaccines, what will I do? <laughs> and the Lord just quicken to me this scripture here in Matthew 6 34 in the rhema word it says therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own and I'm gonna scroll that was the new international version I'm gonna put the King James version here um, I can find it um, what does it say? Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So the day in itself is sufficient. So, okay, back to the New International Version because it's easy to read. <laughs> but I didn't want to just give that scripture as an encouragement right because it's kind of like there do not worry about tomorrow you have to know it in context so I started to make a video just of the scripture and then I started to study a little bit about it being in context and so I went to um, chapter 5 and the Holy Spirit just welled and it wouldn't let go I was gonna just summarize the, the scripture, the chapter five, and put it in context and leave it as that and make a short video because the attention span is not 20 minutes anymore for adults. It's five. It's not five minutes anymore for children. It's probably like three or two. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so my dilemma was not to make a real long video. So I made a video, it was 36 minutes long. So I thought, okay, where was it that the Holy Spirit was dwelling in me? And when did it stop? Because I read through chapters five and chapter six to get to that last verse. It started in chapter five, but it was started welling in verse 10 okay so I'm gonna read this is the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus was talking to the crowds he sat down and began to teach and he said and I'm gonna read this part blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now this is where the Holy Spirit well, and where I got the idea that I need to read the whole thing. And I went on and read all of chapter 5. So I'm going to uh, break it down a little bit because I've done what I'm supposed to do. This is giving us who we are, right? 
this here seems like something that might be to come or is already it is in, in other places but um, in the developed countries we don't feel this as much but the persecution that we feel is a little different in the developed countries right now and in my personal life and I'm sure in many of yours uh, I'm always hearing people make fun of Jesus and Christianity and stuff we are blessed and people insult and they say all kinds of evil and it's true I don't know if you guys feel it every time, really, but I do, okay? Um, and boom, do not worry. So I'm going to read from verse 25 down to verse 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food in the body, more than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. Do they not, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? The uh, King James Version talks says, can you grow? like another cubit. <laughs> Sense of humor. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the fathers of the fields grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly fathers know that you need them. Let that sink in. He knows that we need them. But seek ye first what to do, his kingdom and his righteousness, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 